The woolly bugger is one of those must-have patterns whether you fish lakes, rivers, or streams. My jig bugger transforms his proven design into a seductive jig that rides hook point up, reducing fly loss. Make sure you have these materials on hand to tie your own selection of jig buggers. So let's tie the jig bugger, my variation of the venerable woolly bugger, such a popular fly. Into the jaws of my regal, I've placed a Daiichi 4640 number 10 60 degree jig hook. And onto that hook, I've slid a 1 8 inch slotted tungsten bead, in this case gold. And we'll slide that. It's important to slide the bead with the narrow end towards the hook eye and the slot facing the back. And just to help position the bead so it stays there, I'm going to put a little dab of super glue, brushable super glue, onto the shank. And you want to twist and manipulate this bead so it slides right down tight against the hook eye. So push that right down. So you've got to twist it and manipulate it. Once that's in place, I'm going to attach my tying thread, in this case black 8 and it's just the color of the thread is to complement the overall coloration of the fly. And don't get hung up on the colors or materials I'm going to use here so much, as this is more of a tying style fly than one that's actually governed by exact materials as I've perhaps featured in other flies. So we're just getting our thread base down all the way along, and once we've got our good thread base down, it provides traction for the rest of our materials. I'm going to take the tying thread back up just back from behind the bead and let it hang. For the tail, I'm going to use some marabou and I like to use a plume that has nice um, little um, barbs or barbules on the stems. Forgive me if I use the wrong term there. And I'm just going to strip off one side of this plume. So I'm going to come in and I get to a point, I'm going to strip off, so I can only strip so far, and then I just fold what I've stripped onto what I haven't stripped, re-grip, and strip, and fold all the way down, so I have a nice, even stack of marabou with the tips aligned. Because I don't like to tear my marabou to length. If you've seen any of my previous flies, you're probably aware of that. So we're just going to, again, a little moisture on your fingers will help control and gather. And we're going to tie in a tail that's approximately the shank length long. So I'm going to place that measurement at the base, slide my right thumb and forefinger up to where the thread is. That's my cutoff point, so I'm going to come in with my left thumb and forefinger, pinch and hold the material here, come in with my scissors and trim away the excess, hold that down, one loose wrap, two loose wraps, now I tighten. When I tighten those wraps are just going to collapse all the way around the material evenly and then I'm going to slide my thumb and forefinger back holding these under tension and they'll stay aligned right on top of the shank. They won't twist and roll all over the place. Once that tail is secured in I'm going to bring my tying thread back forward and we got a nice sparse tail. If you got a few errant strands um, you can pinch them to length. I think I got one there but again I don't want to pinch the whole bunch. I can do a little preening but uh, don't get carried away. And there's a few little strands here, so I'll just trim those out of the way. So now we're going to add a little tail flash, and I like, when, especially with black tails, but a lot of my darker tails, I like using the 6904 Flashaboo, the ice blue pearl, I believe they call this color. Uh, but 6904 is the color code you want to remember. And we're just going to, I've taken two strands, moisten them to keep them together. I'm going to tie them in so there's at least a shank length and a half sticking out in front and the majority of the material trailing out behind the tie-in point. I'm going to secure the strands that were behind the tie-in point along the near side of the shank by just holding them in place. So they lay along the sides of the tail, right down to the base. Advance my tying thread back forward, almost to the tie-in point. Take the two strands that were sticking out in front of that original tie-in point, fold them over the back side of the shank, 
and secure them down the far side again to the base of the tail so they flow along the far side of the tail. And then I can just moisten them to hold them together and I like to trim them just slightly longer than the tail so they flick, flash and flicker a bit when the fly is being pulled through the water. Now we're going to tie in a rib for this fly. I like to use that to secure and reinforce my hackle and in this case we're using extra small gold to complement the gold bead. My general practice is my ribbing wire is the same coloration as my bead but that's not a rule you have to follow if you don't want to. So we just secured that along the hook shank. I'm going to come back down to the base of the tail keeping that underbody profile nice and even so we don't have any unnatural lumps and bumps in our finished fly. For the body of the fly you could dub it, you could use marabou, lots of color combinations. Again we're showing you a bit of a tying style but I like to use uh, this brill. This is the large stuff so we have long fibers are going to move and flow throughout the hackle. It has some UV properties built into it as well. So we're just going to take a length of this and tie it in at the base of the tail. Just like so. Just get it captured. Secure that all the way up. We can come in with our scissors if we want and trim away any of those errant fibers. Well, it's probably not too critical because they'll get overwrapped. But we'll just clean things up here. Thread is hanging right up at the hook eye, or just behind the bead rather. And now we're just going to come in. I get that half turn of the material in. Now I can start applying tension and it won't twist and roll. And we're just going to lay one wrap right next door or adjacent to the previous wrap. And with each wrap, I'm coming in with my thumb and forefinger and I am sweeping the fibers back. You could also dip this in some water. That makes it nice and manageable too. And you're just going to strip and flow, just like winding a wet hackle, if, wet fly hackle, if you want. You want to strip and expose. So you make sure that next wrap is going in adjacent to the previous wrap and covering up any of that black thread and marabou underbody we've got going. I'm going to come up behind the bead, tie off, two wraps over the top, two wraps in front, reach in with our Dr. Slicks, give it a nip. Pull everything back, secure that out of the way, and now we're going to tie in our hackle. And This is your standard basic uh, olive and black woolly bugger, so we're going to use some black hackle. This is a grizzly fiber that's been dyed, grizzly feather rather, that's been dyed black. I'm stripped off the flue at the base of the feather. I'm going to expose the stem, and I'm going to tie it in. I'm going to hold the feather along the side, tie it in directly behind the bead, with that most prominently marked or convex side or shiny side of the feather facing forward, wet fly style. So we're just going to get that in place, lock that in, trim off the excess stem carefully. Don't want to trim our thread. And I've also left a little bit of the stem exposed and this just helps me get my first wrap in the right position. So I'm going to again put that tying thread right behind the bead Place one complete wrap behind the bead, another wrap right behind, and then I'm just going to sort of zigzag and weave the hackle back in open spacing through the brill fibers, and I actually do my movement on the underside of the hook and then come up vertically so I get that nice even spacing. And then I'm going to come up over the top and I'm going to let that feather hang. And you can just hold it in place or attach a weight, in this case a pair of hackle pliers. Just let that dangle, grab your rib, come up underneath, trap the stem of the feather and just weave and zigzag, much like you did with the feather going down the shank when you palmered it. You're going to wind this ribbing through and what you've done here is use that wire ribbing to secure the hackle stem and made a very, very durable fly. Anytime you palmer a a fly with a body hackle like this, you want to use this ribbing technique because what happens, and we'll just twist once we tied it off, twist and break away the excess, what happens is a fish has to sever each of these wire segments, if you will, before your fly will become unraveled. So you're going to get more fish per, more fish per fly and just add some durability. We'll trim off the waist hackle at the back that's secured in with the ribbing. We're going to attach, or sorry, 
add some brushable super glue to our tying thread so we don't we get the thread to carry the glue into where it needs to be and don't run the risk of matting our fibers down with um, head cement or uh, brushable super glue. We're going to hold that back, wind directly behind the beads, and come in and throw a whip finish in. Again, sweeping everything back to expose the tie off point. Disengage our whip finisher and trim the tying thread. And your jig bugger is done. So there's your basic black and olive coloration. That's probably one of the most popular color combinations out there for a woolly bugger. But again, you could take any favorite woolly bugger combinations you have. You can make bait fish colored ones. You could take your favorite leech pattern. This jig style fly is so good because it rides hook point up. When you strip it through the water, it's going to pitch and undulate. And it's also great on a European nymphing rig as well. The finished jig bugger. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you are visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.